What's good, Homo Squad? It's your boy, Homo Ziggy. We back here with another reaction for y'all. And I ain't gonna lie. From the way how this whole beef with Kendrick and Drake thing and such, and with the final result being Kendrick won, obviously. Because let's face it, since the Not Like Us released and such, since that song released, let's be honest, that bitch has been going crazy around the world from being the top selling song on spotify history and shit beating out drake's like what was it god's plan or so look and then you got motherfuckers dancing to that shit hey man and hell you even getting youtube rappers using that beat and such to beef with one another hey you wonder why most niggas are scared to want to beef with Kendrick so I got a video here that's been recommended to me on my channel and on my YouTube page and such where where it's titled why rappers are scared of Kendrick Lamar why I mean hell he's literally known as the boogeyman of hip-hop if you got a title if if anyhow somebody gives you the nickname of the boogeyman of hip-hop then you know not to mess with that person, especially in a diss, in a rap battle, in a rap beef. So hey, shout out to the channel, Lu like shout out to the channel Luis, Lu Astia. Hopefully I'm saying it right. If I'm not, I apologize. Go, but make sure to go subscribe to them channel and such. So hey. This is gonna be 20 minutes of how not to be fucking with Kendrick. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on my socials up there. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Back up a little bit. Kendrick Lamar is terrifying to his fellow rappers. Not just in the wake of his recent activity, but long before he was ever as battle tested as he is now. At the minute, hip hop is back. Kendrick Lamar is terrifying to his fellow rappers, not just in the wake of his recent activity, but long before he was ever as battle tested as he is now. At the minute, hip hop is basking in the landscape where he destroyed Drake so savagely that his name is now being used as an acronym to warn others. So, I'm rap against Kendrick ever. ever. You didn't sit home with the fucking Blackberry or the bum composition book and write acronyms for your own fucking name. But while Drake's defeat at KDOT's hands has proven exactly why so few have gone at Kendrick over the years, what is it that makes his reputation so fierce in the first place? Well, there's actually a variety of factors that made it clear to the whole world that Kendrick wasn't a man to trifle with. My name is Luesta, and this Luesta. is why rappers are scared of Kendrick Lamar. There's a lot of angles to tackle why Kendrick has such a reputation for being one of the MCs that you just don't attempt to rhyme against. But one of the main reasons is that the reverence that the culture has for him trickles down to the top of the industry. Co-signed by Dr. Dre and passed the torch I mean, to the hey. West Coast by Snoop Dogg, The Game, Corrupt, and every other OG you can think of. I mean, hey, if you get from all the if you got the if you got a golden pass from Dr. Dre himself and the then also the West Coast by Snoop Dogg got the past the torch passed to you from the old, one of the OGs of the West Coast Snoop Dogg the bro already with just those two co-signs oh yeah you know you that golden hmm? you got co-signs from two of the legends of the West Coast backing you oh you said for, you you know not to be fuck with them. Dog, the game, corrupt, and every other OG you can think of. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna think this. Passing the torch, then you better yeah. See? There's your proof. This nigga passed the torch to him. Even the legendary Eminem once thought that his pen game couldn't possibly live up to the hype. The thing with Eminem was crazy to me, he kicks everybody out the studio. I, just, I took it as him kicking everybody out to see if that's really you 
writing them raps oh. that you're writing. Oh. You okay, get what I'm saying? And if, even if you got Eminem of all people, right? If you got Eminem of all people saying that, nah, nigga, that ain't your pen. You got Eminem of all people testing your pen. Then, nigga, that means you really got it. Because we, boy, boy. Eminem known to be upset at rappers who use ghostwriters, that's a pretty fair assumption. But as Ed Sheeran remembered, he soon found out exactly why K-Dot was given so many props by people that he respected. Eminem, he'd heard that Kendrick Lamar was the best rapper and he invited him to the studio to get, get him on a song and he arrived and Kendrick came with all his mates. And uh, Eminem said, um, I just want you in the studio, just you on your own. And then my engineer is going to come in and then record you doing it, but your mates aren't allowed in. And then Kendrick did it, wrote a sick verse, and then all everyone came in to listen to it. And Eminem said he did it to test Kendrick because he thought he had a ghostwriter. And he Thanks. then realized that he didn't and then claimed that he was the best. Ever since the two of them collaborated, even, even put him on one of his albums. That's when you know, bro, school, for you, you, one of your own favorites, your favorite, Kendrick, got a co-signed by Eminem so much. Eminem not only test him to see if his pen game was actually his own pen game, but it was so good and so fire that he put him on his own album, put him on one of his albums. So nigga, what? Why you not? Why you not bigging up Eminem for when he's bigging up one of your own favorites? Hmm? Hmm? Why you not? It's so crazy that school's on this whole tirade about how oh why, it ain't about black and white. Then motherfucker, if it ain't about black, you know what? We not here about that. We here for this. But hey, that just shows you, nigga. All just with it already co it already got me that when you already got co-signed by the likes of Dre, Dre, Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg, they don't already sit significant for me. But when you put up when you get on Eminem, and let's be honest, even though Eminem collabs with a lot of black rappers, let me say it like this. Yes, he collabs with a lot of black rappers, but he don't frequently collabs with a lot of rappers I'm being specific with what I say yes he collabs with mostly black artists but in terms of collabing with rappers he don't do that more frequently as he should so when you know your pen game is that great that you got Eminem wants you to be on one of his songs <laughs> nigga and he then realized that he didn't and then claimed that he was the best. Ever since the two of them collaborated like, on bro. the game off the Marshall Mathers LP2, Eminem has known that Lamar is among the elites in the game. And in a rare Rats. show of vulnerability from Shady, he suggested that he would think twice about coming for Kendrick. And it's the same thing if I get on this, getting on the track with Kendrick. I can never tell what the fuck he's gonna do. Right. Because he is such a... You got even Eminem giving props. He can fucking do any, pretty much anything, right? right. And, he's, and he's so proficient at it. He's so good at Eminem it. Eminem is giving him props. you don't know what you're going to get. That to me is like a top tier lyricist because it's like... Even Eminem you know, himself you is... You can get your ass kicked any day. Besides overshadowing rappers on features, K-Dot never had to square off with other MCs in the same way that Shady had to in his career. But he always Facts. insisted that he had it in him to tear a rapper to shreds, even after he became a mainstream star. His entire Section 80 campaign basically revolved around the claim that he would kill your favorite rapper. Then, on Damn's Element, he issued a warning that all they had to do was say his name and they'll see Candyman. Then, after winning a Pulitzer Candy. Prize, he let his colleagues know so what time it was on Rich Spirit, where he told them to stop playing with him before he turns you into a song. Stop playing with me before I turn into a song. Now, in the wake of Aubrey's Grace. demolition and J. Cole waving the white flag, we know that wasn't an idle threat as over these past few weeks, he's left massive footprints on their legacies. As they struggle to pick themselves back up, you can imagine that no one will be stepping to Dot anytime soon. But long before everything that followed Kendrick's declaration of fuck the big three, it's just big me went down, rappers already showed a real reluctance to cross him. In fact, 
fact, when they let their ego get in the way and spoke out against him, they usually decided to pay homage instead. Because although he had never really been in a battle until Drake thought he could take him on, he already proved yeah. how much his presence and the chatter around your career can do with Big Sean. In many ways, Big Sean is pretty much the reason why Kendrick is going at Drake in the first place. By now, we all know about K-Dot's infamous verse on Control, where he hijacked Big Sean's track to let the whole industry know that even though he had love for them, he was trying to murder them Made and it. take their fans. I got love for all you, you niggas, but I'm trying to murder you. Basically saying, nigga, I made love with y'all and such, we made this, but now nah, when it comes to this rap shit, I'm murdering all of y'all. That's what he was... He's been on that energy and he never stopped. At the same time, Big Sean insisted that he didn't even get bodied on the track, even though he opted to leave it off his Hall of Fame album that it was originally intended to be on. But he never really managed to escape its shadow. I put that work in. Like, you're not going to disrespect me. I, I hop on any track with anybody and I will not only stand my own, you're going to know that it's my verse and you're going to know I'm, that's I'm, what I like. I'm it's, in okay, it. That's Except for control. Kendrick Washington, you on control? No, stop it. Sean, come on stop now. It. Come it. on. And how long, how long ago is that? What year is this? That were you right? You got to you, you okay, right. Everybody okay, okay. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Nigga, it don't matter if it was 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, five thousand, five years ago, even a year ago. Point is, it's still talked about still to this day, nigga. That control verse was in 2013. We're in 2024 now, and we're still talking about this verse. That's how powerful that verse was. Hmm? We're still talking about a verse that was from a decade ago, and it still rings to this day. So fuck out of here talking about, well, how long would that? It don't fucking matter, nigga. It could even be a month old. Point is, we still talking about it. Right? That were you right? You got you, you okay, right. Everybody okay. you're right. 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 And I still don't feel like I got washed anyway. Nah, you got washed on control. Whatever. Your opinion. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't, you can't focus on people's opinions. You know why? Because that's going to throw you off. Although he never fully accepted that there was beef, Big Sean did attempt to throw subliminal shots at Dot from time to time. For example, on songs like Me, Myself, and I and No More Interviews, people felt like the Detroit rapper was aiming at Kendrick's rapping style. But as is often the case, Kendrick never even acknowledged that anything was going down. Then, on the hard part four, he let the world know that he heard what was being said and that if he kept pushing, Big Sean would get what he thought he wanted. My fans can't wait for me to sun your punk ass and crush your whole little shit. I'll be pun your punk ass, you a scared little bitch. While he never got a formal diss track dedicated to him, Big Sean was informed in no uncertain terms that Kendrick would come at his neck whenever he wanted to. Meanwhile, the control situation left such a permanent imprint on Big Sean's career that you could almost divide it between the time before that verse and everything that happened after. And in a move that has really set the tone for how people come out of the other side of squabbling with Kendrick, Big Sean speaks of him with nothing but admiration now and basically acts as if there was never a problem in the first place. The whole... Ken, Big, Big Sean Kendrick beef was going on. It was something I wish I would have spoke up about because there was nothing. So then I remember going online and seeing like, oh, is he talking about Kendrick? Because I'm talking about people who rap fast. I wasn't beefing with nobody. Insisting that he didn't want any problems, Big Sean still had to acknowledge that the whole thing has haunted him for years. And in every verse I do, people would be like, oh, is this a response? Is this a response? And I'm like, it's like, damn, I can't even show no aggression. People think it's a damn response. It got to a point where... Well, I mean, nigga, let's face it. Like I said, it don't, you was talking about how oh, it's been how long ago. Nigga, no matter where you're gonna go, no matter what song you're doing or whatever, people are still gonna be on your behind ever since K-Dot hijacked your damn control beat and went crazy on that shit so you can say what you want you can want to do any other music and such but people are always gonna still say that nigga you got washed on control cuz let's be honest has anybody even remember you even make I'm gonna be like this has anyone even remember that it was your beat Hmm? Think about it like that. Has anybody else even remember before when that beat, before when K Dot did it, was it your beat? 
I know I didn't. Because I just thought the control verse was just only Kendrick's own song and such. But no. Apparently it was from your own beat that he had a verse on. So it's crazy that nigga. For many years. For hell. Even people who are like me and such. Didn't even know that was your beat. Until when we realized. Kendrick just snuck. When, whoosh, you think that was your beat? Shing! It's mine now nigga. That's how it literally felt. Sean still had to acknowledge that the whole thing has haunted him for years. And in every verse I do, people be like, oh, is this a response? Is this a response? And I'm like, it's like, damn, I can't even show no aggression. People think it's a damn response. It got to a point where somehow it was just a weird tension between me and him, even though it was already said it wasn't no beef because people made it that way, right? Mm. Although Big Sean probably got the raw end of the deal out of control, there was another man on the track who goes by the name of Jay Electronica. And although he oh, was yeah. regarded as one of the world's greatest MCs at the time, he didn't escape unscathed either. Basically, Jay Elect didn't appreciate the fact that people were saying Kendrick beat him on the track. In fact, he said that Dot was envious of him. Kendrick will bother you. Look, you couldn't pay Kendrick a million dollars. Kendrick wouldn't tell you. Kendrick could tell you himself he couldn't body me. Kendrick, look, Kendrick is my son. Kendrick is my baby. Kendrick wishes that he could be me. Followed up with his verse on The Curse of Mayweather, where he rapped. He got 11 Grammy nominations, Yama Equal, Man Fuck These White People, which refers to the amount of Grammys Kendrick won at the time. He followed it up with My Grandmother Died at 82 Scrubbing Floors, and rappers still running around begging for awards. Jay Lake looked like he was practically begging for problems. Then, from out of nowhere, he seemed to have a change of heart and was giving Daw his flowers all of a sudden. Lastly, peace to Kada and TDE because, regardless to whom or what, we're brothers fighting the same energy. Forgive my past energy. Although it's unclear what made him switch up like that, Jay, like many rappers we're going to discuss, was another man who folded on Daw when he was put to the test. For the You see the- Now you've seen a pattern, right? So, so, Big Sean was talking big shit. And saying that Kendrick did embody him and such on that control verse. And then later on over the years, he still has a pro- He's still getting beat to death about people saying that he got body wash. Right? Now, J Electronica... Which, honest to God, straight up with y'all, I didn't even know about this nigga. As God is my witness, I didn't even know about him. So, I don't want nobody saying, oh, you're not a real hip-hop fan, no nigga. Most of these niggas I don't even know about. To me, right, I don't care what anybody say. I don't care if you say, oh, I'm not a hip-hop fan, motherfucker. Well, how many t I'm not even going to repeat myself of how many times I've said it. You know what? This is going to be my last time saying this. I was mostly born in, I was born and raised Jamaican, right? Mostly, the most songs I've ever listened to, obviously, it's my dancehall music. Obviously, my Jamaican music, straight up. From the time I was born to up till 13, straight up Jamaican music. My Jamaican music all day. When it came down to the U.S. now, when I moved up here in 2014, from 2014 to currently, right now, throughout my entire life, the certain music I'm listening to was from music of today's generation, you can say, and a little bit of ones who are legends, like the likes of Eminem, Snoop Dogg, and such, right? Cool. So I have never even once heard of J Electronica until when I see with the whole thing with people bowing of certain rappers bowing down to Kendrick because they didn't want the smoke with him. So yeah. Like many rappers were going to discuss, was another man who folded on Dot when he was put to the test. For the most part, hip hop's response to Kendrick's name drops on control not only laid the groundwork for the Drake beef, but it also set the precedent for how rappers would tiptoe around him. At the time, there were tons of responses to control, but they all seemed like they were carefully towing the line as to not go too far. For example, after feeling angered that Slaughterhouse were left out of the shoutouts, one of the group's members, Joel Ortiz, responded with the vicious track titled Out of Control, where he let Kendrick have it. 
and you the king of New York. Little homie, you ain't the king of New York. You the next thing on my floor. But later on, he would do an interview with Vibe and say that he was actually saluting Kendrick for the most part. As for the notoriously fearless Joe Budden, he was hosting a live stream for the response track only to opt out and not release it. Amid responses from Papoose and others, Kendrick remained so calm about the whole thing that it would be impossible for it to not strike fear in their hearts. How you feeling about all the, um, all the comebacks lately from your uh, control verse? You gotta try hard. So when they all backed down, it really they made the whole culture harder, realize said. that Lamar was to be treated with respect. Basically, the money and power strikes. What he always, what he said, the money and power and respect. The last one is better. <laughs> I don't care all about this money and all this power I might have and whatnot, nigga. I'm all about that respect factor. Cause once you, it's basically like this. Once you get that last one. The other two, in a way, don't even matter. Because if I ain't got the respects of my peers, all this money and this power shit I might have ain't sh ain't shit. There's always a caveat when it comes to Kadot slander, rather than anyone really coming for his neck. I mean, just look at what happened to French Montana when he attempted to diss him. Over the years, French has had a few French things to Montana. say about Kadot. French trying to- French Montana? When did this nigga ever try to come at? Hold up a second. French Montana. Ain't nobody trying to say about French Montana going after this nigga, after Kendrick. Ain't no way. What? Just look at what happened to French Montana when he attempted to diss him. Over the years, French has had a few things to say about Kendrick. First off, he claimed that he was being pushed by the industry. Why you think Kendrick sells more than like street rappers? Um, cause they cause they position him like how they did in the Grammys. As 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 the new music, but I don't feel like that's you know, it's not, not it's not that it's not the right thing to do, but I just feel like they you see it's like the whole thing was like. Kendrick Knight. Then, more ridiculously, he said that he had more hits than him, only to be clowned relentlessly by the internet. If we just talking about anthems, me versus Kendrick hit for hit, I believe I can go neck to neck. I've been making hits for a long time. I love Kendrick. That's not just for Kendrick, that's for anybody they put in front of me. However, not everyone agreed with this. I mean, even other rappers hopped on the bandwagon to mock him for it. Stupid ass nigga say he got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> yeah. When you got Young Thug of all people mocking your ass, get the f And look, I love Young Thug, and with his case right now, it is what it is. But come on now, nigga. You got more hits than Kendrick? Get the hell out of here. The, on the only hits I've ever heard from French Montana were work. And you know what's so crazy? No. The only ever hit that this nigga ever, to me, to my knowledge, right? Just to my knowledge, that he has ever got a hit for was unforgettable. And you know what's so crazy about it? It was with somebody else. He had it with somebody, Sway Lee. Prove me wrong. Let me know of any other hits that's only with him. No other feature artists. Only with him that he had a hit. If it don't involve nobody else and it's only him, no remix of nothing, no feature of nothing, only him, and such. Just say, fool. The man said he got more hits than me and Kendrick. Bro, your junk ass ain't got more hits than no motherfucker than Kendrick, and you ain't damn sure you got more hits or albums than me. You smoke hard. Why you tripping? Real dope. But while he had smoke for Thug and engaged in a war of words with him over it, French Montana never tried to provoke K-Dot any further. And now, just like everyone else, French has since basically apologized for even thinking he could mess with him and See what happens? Talk big shit, then realize nigga, you ain't that shit when it comes to Then Kendrick. he was just in his feelings at the time. I was just heated I ain't win a Grammy for, for Unforgettable. That's what it was? Yeah. Did I just talk about? What did I just say? What did I just freaking say? Cause I know my sh nigga at the let's be honest. Cause at the time where it was what around 2016, 2017, you cannot tell me 
Especially if somebody from a Caribbean country with the way how that shit sound. And this nigga's from Morocco, mind you. Now, I think Morocco is more of like an African type of country, but either way, nigga, I know my kind of, I know when a music is sounding that good and it's that popular, nigga. The only reason why it was so popular is because of Sway Lee's vocals for it. You can say French did his thing, but let's be honest, it was mostly Sway Lee doing the whole heavy lifting. Let's be honest. And then what made it more fire was the music video for it, where they went to U Uganda, I think it was, and they got every African kid out there dancing that shit. So let's be honest. Ain't that's the only hit for me, and he just confirmed this bitch for me. So, so nigga, ain't no freaking way you gonna tell me, nigga, that you got more hits than Kendrick, nigga. Your only hit, like I just said, was unforgettable. This just, he just proved it for me. At the time, I was just heated. I ain't win a Grammy for for Unforgettable. That's what it was. Yeah, but well, Kendrick is my dog. Like, but just just that one 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 day at the interview, I was just so heated. I ain't win, and he was the winner. And I was just <laughs> like, yo, but I fuck with Kendrick. I, I fuck with the whole um with the whole team. Opting to say that he was in the wrong rather than say Kendrick had any part in it. This is a rare show of humility for a rapper. And while Cole has been taking all the flack for getting up on that Dreamville festival stage and saying that his seven minute drill diss song towards Kendrick didn't sit right with his spirit and would be deleted off streaming services. When I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel that shit disrupts my fucking peace. History shows that he's not the first person to make his apologies to Kendrick. And maybe fear of being dismantled on a verse wasn't the only reason. Although his immense talents on the mic are one major factor, French extending his love to Kendrick's whole team is important. Because as these rappers likely learned before going at his neck, messing with Kendrick requires you to go up against an army. And while Kendrick might have been a good kid in a mad city, he's got a whole city behind him. And there's something dangerous about Kendrick that not a lot of people speak about. Growing up in Compton, Kendrick was exposed to the gang lifestyle early on, yeah, and many of his okay. best friends were active members. Then, after joining, t most people think like, "Hey, that ain't with that West Coast type of energy." Just because he's on this conscious vibe, nah, nigga. He really that West. If not like us didn't prove that he really on that West Coast type vibe, I don't know what does. TDE, he suddenly found himself in the midst of the Bounty Hunter Bloods and Hoover Crips as he teamed up with fellow label mates Schoolboy Q and J-Rock as well as a whole host of other people who were repping sets. Recently, Kendrick's gang ties have come under the microscope again. Because if the rumors are true, Cole might have received a tip to back off from the beef that sounds not too dissimilar to what you'd see on the streets from Schoolboy Q. Reporting from Dreamville Festival, an unnamed source revealed that it was actually Schoolboy Q who allegedly warned J. Cole to stop beefing with Kendrick before the apology. I'm not specifying what kind of warning, whether it was a bullying move, a Debo-like maneuver, or just a friendly heads up. I don't think it matters at this point. Point. But based on what Punch, TDE's president, said, I think they gave him what he needed to hear to bow out of the battle with as much grace as possible. Whether he was letting him know what kind of heat KDOT had in store for Drake with the abuse allegations, or telling him to ease up before things got dangerous, this whole situation proves that whatever Kendrick is getting involved in, the streets he grew up on have his back. In terms of Thanks. gangs, Kendrick has long been rumored to have connections to the West Side Pie route. In addition to his affiliation to the Red Side of the city, Kendrick also has uncles who are Crips, several of which have served the lengthy jail terms for gay that's what I'm saying like y'all be thinking this nigga Pe look this is what I always say with certain rappers just because they do a certain type of rap style that's not what you seem it to be and such that don't mean they wasn't from the streets so just because when Kendrick does his type of music where it's on like a conscious level type vibe don't think that this nigga don't be on that West, still ain't on that West Coast vibe where he go put, where he'll rep his set and shit. That's all I'm saying. Now, am I saying it's right, wrong? Yes. But on the same time, that's how he was brought up. So, I can't, honest to God, I can't fault somebody for how their upbringing was. So, yeah. But yeah, just because Kendrick was on. Just because in his music, in his music career, he was on mostly like on that conscious, lyrical type vibe and whatnot. 
Don't be forgetting this nigga from the West Side. He got a nigga like freaking Snoop Dogg. He got one of the legendary rappers Snoop Dogg passing him the torch. And we know what Snoop Dogg has been over the years. So trust me. He was there when Snoop Dogg was there when the whole Tupac got shot up shit happened. And with the Suge Knight incident, death row incident and such. So trust me. Not a lot of niggas Snoop would just pass the torch to and say, homie, you got it and such. So trust me. Yeah. Long been rumored saying. to have connections to the West Side Pie Route. In addition to his affiliation to the Red Side of the city, Kendrick also has uncles who are Crips, several of which have served a lengthy jail terms for gang-related activity and armed robbery. And he's still locked in with them to this very day. Does the crew come out every time you come to Compton? Yeah. <laughs> as a result of his connections, as well as both pictures of Kendrick dressed in red, Drake's recent assessment that he isn't affiliated to a set on his new track, Family Matters, has been ridiculed by people from Compton. While at the same time, respecting Kendrick's desire to withhold that from becoming a big part of his identity. Drake says you don't bang a set, and he says the game bangs a set, even Chris Brown bangs a set. He just don't know Kendrick. That's what I'm saying. Like, 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 yeah, you don't just, know Kendrick. Who, 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 Kendrick just don't be private and so like priding himself off of his gang culture. Gang so banging. I guess people think that he a non affiliate. I don't know That's if we posted, but you know, hey. But obviously, like the yeah, the fact is Kendrick severely the, downplays gang affiliation. The push ups was in yeah. his hood, wasn't they? The push ups that you know. talk about, they had the part. Once again, the clues for Cali having his back have all been there. In the music on section 80's Poe Man Dreams, Kendrick has a line where he says, City got my back for that. I give them my trust, so you think about it. Basically, what he's saying here is that he can say things with his chest because he knows that he has the city behind him. And when you look close at those videos of Not Like Us going off in the club, he should definitely feel more confident in that than ever. Yeah, like nigga, you got a whole entire imagine that you got a whole entire club in LA bumping your song. And it's supposed to be a, and it's a diss track towards a nigga. Imagine somebody, imagine that, that your diss, that the diss track that's who's aim at you is getting bumped in the club. Step this way. Well, while this could be taken literally for the whole state of California, that line may contain allusions to his gang ties. In an interview from back in the day, Snoop Dogg went into more detail about this. It's just that he's he's a nice guy, so we're gonna have a problem with it because he doesn't have a gangster approach. But let me let y'all know, he got a hundred thousand motherfucking gangsters with him, so y'all better watch what y'all say. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Keep it hip hop. Because that's what he did. He kept it all hip hop. In spite of the fact that Kendrick hasn't ever definitively said he was a gangbanger, what we do know is that there are times in his life to. where he moved like one. Back in the day, Dot tried to intimidate AD. It's basically like this. You don't have to. One thing I know. One thing I gotta say is this. If you know you was about that lifestyle, you don't have to automatically dress the certain lifestyle to proclaim that you was that lifestyle. You don't have to. I could. It's basically like this. If I was in a gang, if I'm a, if I was in that gang life, right, and I became like Kendrick, where I got this rapper, where I got this success from off my lyrics, my this and that and third, right, and people would think like the way I, where I came from. Oh, he don't really have that type. He really is not about that lifestyle, nigga. One, like that person said, what that guy said. One, y'all don't know me. So, you don't know if I do got them ties or not. And two, just because I don't dress like the certain gang affiliating type of rapper, that don't mean I'm not still about that lifestyle. And three, most importantly, in the music, for me, in the music way, just because my music doesn't say it or doesn't proclaim it, that don't mean I don't still have them with me. That don't mean I don't still got the city on my back, nigga. So trust me. Why you think there's always the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Because just because the cover may look like it's this and that and the third, when you get to reading, when you get to knowing what's in that book, trust me, you will see that nigga. It gets... It gets deep. No diddy.
What we do know is that there are times in his life where he moves like one. Back in the day, Dot tried to intimidate AD of the No Jumper podcast and back on Fig because Kendrick thought he was from a rival neighborhood. Hey, you wanna know a crazy thing about Kendrick, bro? My first encounter with him, he thought I was somebody else, bro. He, he low-key tried to press me. Who? <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. Who, Who do you think you were? Gorilla he Black. from a different hood. I guess like, I guess some niggas jumped him back in the day and mm. I came to the studio and he was mad. He was like, hey, you from Almond Block? And I was like, Nah, but he was hot. He banged on him back. Where's Almond no, Block? No, no, Almond Block is another hood in Compton. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Nah, I ain't from Almond Block. He thought you were lying. And he was like, You is from Almond Block. I'm like, Nah, I ain't from Almond Block. I'm over here. He, he, he was he, like, All right. And then we was cool after that. But it, but, but he was say, mad. Oh, all right. No, he was mad. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was like, he was mad. Like, like yeah. if, I, if I was from Almond Block, he would have got his get back on me that day. From the game members which smoke. regularly appear in his music videos, the musical appears like mustard, proving that they'll throw away any other relationship to ride for his Cali comrade. Dot's status as king of the west coast, and everything that entails it, would make anyone think twice before coming at him. But while there was speculation that Kendrick wasn't to be taken lightly, it's safe to say that this Drake battle has made that crystal clear. Although OVO yeah. stands like Maul or academics may argue otherwise, there's no denying X. that Kendrick washed Drake. Bearing the music itself, the fact that he overthrew Drake's record that's what I was saying. Literally, the Not Like Us record has broken for the most streams ever in a single day for a solo rap song. And Drake's known for doing that too, but the fact that this... So it was champagne poetry? Either way, the fact that he overtook this bitch over for the highest streams for a rap song in a day with a track where he calls him a sex offender it's just diabolical now I really think about that the song that not only got everybody jumping trying to throw up imaginary sets that they claim or they think they claim but and it's also a diss to Drake calling him a sex pedo and such that's the song that took number one Taking away Drake's other, taking away the previous one from Drake, nigga. If that don't, if that don't say that you should not fuck with Kendrick, I don't know what does. Fans are waking up to the fact that he just wasn't to be messed with. I knew Kendrick Lamar was a dude that needed to be left alone when that video of him doing burpees in a parking lot while listening to oldies dropped. Something is clearly wrong with him. Look at this fucking psychopath. His willingness to take a rapper out aside, what's happening to Drizzy these okay, days okay. further explains to why he wasn't challenged before now. Because while people have been throwing jabs at Drake for years, it doesn't matter if they don't hit the general public. But with Kendrick, you have a rare mix of someone who isn't just obscenely skilled, but also has the platform to slander you and reach huge audiences. It's the fear Max. of embarrassment. He's a better rapper than almost everyone in the industry skill-wise. He can do both mainstream and underground style music style. when most yeah. artists just choose one and never change. Because he can immortalize you in a negative light in the form of a classic hit. If you needed proof that this is a real thing, just look at this school teacher's comments about the change in tone around Drake and oh, the yeah, wake I've of seen Not Like video. Us dropping. I, up until today, taught at a very Drake-centric I remember school. this video, I've seen Daddy this video. the most frequently requested song to put on my class playlist. If I asked students what they're listening to in their headphones, Drake. The week Drake. after the leak was a nightmare. But today, I walk in and I can feel that there has been a tectonic shift. Oh my god. <clears throat> This is a Kendrick school now. I pulled my classes on what they thought and they were ready to throw down for Kendrick. I had like one Drake defender in each class, if that. And honestly, I feel bad for those kids because they were getting screamed at. As people move to the side. Think, think about side out here and music out here, but we didn't think about that. A school that was mostly Drake and such, right? Known for Drakeness and such. Because of that shift, and such of Kendrick of what he did almost everybody now is doing Ken is listening to Kendrick and the fact there was just still only one Drake defender there and such right in that class that just shows you nigga Kendrick the fact that Kendrick was able to change the minds of high schoolers from that song is crazy. 
as if that. And honestly, I feel bad for those kids because they were getting screamed at. As people move to the side, he has That's even hit crazy. in his pocket. According to Billboard, from May 3rd to May 6th, Lamar's discography earned around 50 million streams, up 49% from the previous Friday to Monday tracking period. Meanwhile, Drake's overall catalog is actually down. When you similarly compare his streams from that weekend to last weekend, and remove his two streaming available response tracks, push-ups, and family matters. Although Kendrick Damn. won't overtake Drake's streaming numbers as a whole, what is clear is that Kendrick's versatility has proven to be a weapon, and as Eminem suggested earlier, one of the reasons why it's not advisable to test him. You go through all these records, from Like That, to Euphoria, to 616 LA, to Meet the Grams, to Not Like Us, none of those records sound the same at all. It's the widest range I've ever seen in the amount of time in any disc battle ever. When it comes to the rapping and the music, fuck all like the timeline or what's true and what's not true, who's rapping and who is putting out the better records. Kendrick Lamar checked every fucking box sonically that you could think of. From his pen game to his potential gang ties, there are lots of reasons why Kendrick is feared, but the biggest reason of all should be how seriously he takes his craft. I'm so passionate Facts. about hip hop, man. Like, I don't know what era everybody else come from, but I listen, man. Like we play house parties, bro, every night. I love it to a point I can't even describe it. And when I heard these artists say they're the best coming up, I said, I'm not doing it to have a good song. Mm -hmm or one good rap, or a good hook, or a good bridge. I want to keep doing it every time, period. And to do it every time, you have to challenge yourself and you have to confirm to yourself that you're the best. Period. This explains the responsibility he feels to uphold standards, as well as why Drake taking the culture without giving back bothers him so much. This is not something you just play with, you know, get some few dollars and get out, you know. People live their lives to this music. It's my partners in the hood right now. They listen to rap every day just to stop. And what's so crazy is people still want to say, why do you think Kendrick hasn't even gone on J. Cole yet? Because he respects J. Cole that much that even if he was trying to think about it, it's basically like this. The way how Kendrick slaughtered Drake. And for all those say he didn't, let's be honest, he slaughtered Drake. Why do you think he didn't want to do, why do you think J. Cole didn't even all, all right, look, I know I'm trying to mix up my words and plus with the music going in the background, I'm going to try to talk as much louder as I can. All I'm going to say is this. For all them mother suckers who are saying about how old J. Cole bitched out this and that in the third, well, nigga, it's basically like this. With the, not only from this, not only from him backing out or previous to Cole backing out, Look at the entire other catalogs. Big Sean. Talk shit. Guess what happened? Backed out. J Electrona. Talk shit. And they backed down, bowed down. French Montana of all people. Talk shit. Or saying he was in his feelings. And look what happened. Back the hell out. And now your ass. And now him. So, A. Hey, all I'm going to say is. With Kendrick. You don't fuck with the boogeyman. This is not something you just play with. You know, get some few dollars and get out. You know, people mm. give their lives to this music. It's my partners in the hood right now. They listen to rap every day. Because it's the only thing that can relate to their stories and their tribulations you have to take in consideration what you write down on that paper and if you're not doing Next. it to say the most impactful you're doing it to be the best you can be for the list got nipsey hustle there and always shit. one to keep his sword sharp kendrick would never allow himself to lose with that kind of mindset in a genre where other rappers lose their hunger over time kada has always stayed as determined to prove himself as when overly dedicated drops at the same time never bothering anyone unless he feels provoked to explain why kendrick Thank is you. among the most feared rappers of any era we need to borrow a phrase that dates back to Roman times. If you want peace, prepare for war. Whether you may realize it or not, Kendrick stays ready. And after destroying Drake, he's probably bought himself a whole lot of that coveted peaceful life for decades to come. Unless someone is stupid enough to ignore these warnings and try him again. Yeah, like nigga. Bro, it's the f what? Alright, so you already know our. So shout out to Lou Astica. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong at the first, but hey. What m proved it to me that Kendrick was solidified 
was when freaking got the co double co-signs from Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg of all people of the West Coast, right? But more, but to me, more importantly, was when Eminem tested him to see if he didn't have no Ghost Rider or anything, right? Because in the realm of how Ghost Rider is now in hip hop and such, it is what it is. But to test him to actually see that if all the shit that he be rapping about and such is from his pen and such, and Shot the hell out of him so much that one he put him on us he put him in one of his songs for his Marshall Matters LP2 album. But the fact that even Eminem said that you don't even want to fuck with him. even he wouldn't want to fuck with him, bro. That just says a whole lot. Cause y'all can say what y'all want. But if Eminem even saying that he don't want to fuck with Kendrick, that solidifies to me that nigga Kendrick is the boogeyman of hip hop. He is. That solidifies this for me. That even Eminem is saying that he don't want to fuck with Kendrick in a rap beef. But either way, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. Do you think? <laughs> Cause I know I I guarantee you there's still gonna be people still to this saying about how Kendrick and all that in this. Hey, all I'm gonna say is this: Do you think Kendrick is the boogeyman of hip hop? Yes or no? Leave a one for yes, leave a two for no, and let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you like this video, I'll make sure to come back to more of Lou Lou Astica Lou Astica, cause I see how he does more other videos and such. And who knows, I might come back to his channel more. But it's been your boy Humble Ziggy signing out. Stay positive. Keep the vibes up. I'm out.